What is up guys? Ken here with Hobby Harvest. Today I want to talk to you about five easy attractions that you can put on your land without a whole lot of effort that the deer really love coming to. Now, yeah, we talk about food plots a lot and those really are probably the number one attraction for deer, but sometimes you don't have all the time and money and effort and whatever available to be able to put in a food plot. Or maybe you have food plots in already and you want some additional attractions on your land or something to use to connect those other bigger attractions on your land. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So number one on that list is of course mock scrapes. Now mock scrapes are super cheap. You literally just need a piece of wood, a stick about an inch and a half to two inches in diameter, six feet long, a bit of cordage. I use paracord hang it from a limb, scuff up the ground underneath, and away you go. It is the easiest thing for you to put into the woods that is the most attraction for the littlest amount of time and money it takes to put in the woods. So if you're not using those, you need to start this year. They're just so good. They're so attractive to the deer, and they're just so easy to put in. So why not have one at every single one of your stand locations? Plus then the deer are focused on that mock scrape when they come into that area instead of looking at you up in the stand or at whatever else might be in the area that might spook them off or put them on edge anyway as they're coming through. So that gets us into number two and number two are travel corridors. So travel corridors can be put in an open field or in the woods. And these are just something that you're using to like create a man-made deer trail. So you're just opening up the woods a little bit. So yeah, you can use a chainsaw, but you can use something just like a little pruning shears as well. Or if you're in like a field, just a lawnmower, you just take a lawnmower right through the field where you want the deer to move. And they will always take that path of least resistance when they're not being pressured by something or scared by something. So you can guide them right where you want them to go by just easily creating some travel corridors for them. And that'll really help to connect all of these other attractions with these corridors. Now, when you are putting these corridors in, don't make them in a big straight line like a shooting lane and shooting lanes are bad i've talked about this in other videos but deer don't like to see straight like a hundred yards through the woods so you'll actually notice that your most mature bucks will completely avoid something like a shooting lane they'll go all the way to the end of it until there's cover and then cross they won't cross straight across it because they just do not like the idea of being able to step out and look either way and see forever into the woods. So when you make these corridors, make sure they wind and zig and zag through the woods or through a field so that if you're standing on one spot of it, you can't see too far down either direction along the trail. That'll also help you to pack more deer into a tighter area because deer really don't like to be near each other either away from or outside of their own social groups. So you'll be able to have like say two groups of deer on that same trail, say 50, 100 yards apart because they can't really see each other as they're coming through on that trail. So that brings us to the next thing and this that's brows. Now, a lot of us don't think to put in brows. We're usually worried more about like those leafy soft greens that are in food plots and such, but you really can think about your brows. Now, Red osier dogwood's a very popular one, especially in the northern part of the country. But any soft shrub like a red osier dogwood, the deer love to browse on year round, but especially in the winter when all of the leaves kind of fall off the trees and die off. That's like their number one food source during the winter months. So what you can do with something like red osier dogwood or whatever you have in your area that's similar is to clip that back or cut that back so i think of like red osier dogwood if you were to just to cut it off right at the ground it'll grow back as much as like two feet in that first year and that two foot of growth is that nice tender part of the stalk that the deer really love to chew on so what you can do is if you have existing shrubs like the red osier dogwood you can trim them back to get that regenerative growth going that the deer will be attracted to. But if you don't have them, you can try to establish them. Now that's a little bit more work than just clipping back the ones you currently have. But if you do have them or if you can get a hold of them, you can just clip them when they're dormant and stick them in the dirt. And you're gonna get maybe a good 50% of those to grow. 
Now I'm trying something this year where I've actually clipped a whole bunch of them and I put them in five gallon buckets with growth hormone and water and I'm seeing if I can get them to start growing. They're actually, some of them are starting to sprout already and starting to get a little bit of root on them. And then I'm gonna take those out and plant those once it warms up and I can depend on those roots really taking hold. So I'm gonna try it this year as well and we're gonna see how that goes. I already have probably two thirds of the perimeter of one of my food plots covered in red osier dogwood. So this is just an experiment to like add a little bit more, but I'll bring that to you guys in a video too, as soon as I get through that full process of doing that. But so yes, you want to get as much browse in there as well. It's a good, easy way, cheap way for you to bring more attraction to your deer herd. So that brings us to the fourth thing. Now this is water holes. Now water holes, we're starting to get into a little bit more work down here at the bottom. So water holes, yeah, you're gonna have to dig a big hole in the ground by hand, unless you can somehow get like a mini excavator in there or something. But it's gonna take you a couple hours to dig the hole, but that water hole is going to be a huge attraction if you don't have water in your area. Now, if you have water in your area, I would probably focus my time and efforts on something else on this list or on improving your food plots or whatever. But if there is no water in your area, a water hole is a huge attraction to the deer. And deer don't actually need a whole lot of water when they eat the greens during the summer, when it's the hottest out, they're actually getting most of their water that way. But what that water hole is very attractive to are bucks during the rut. And I know most of us are probably out there targeting the biggest buck in the woods, even if that's not what we end up shooting by the end of the year. But we'd all like to think that that's what we're going to do when the season starts. And this water hole on a property that does not have water is a huge, awesome way to get them to come to you while they're cruising during the rut because they are burning so many calories, covering so many miles. They're dehydrating themselves and they will come to that water if they know it's there. So this brings me to the last thing. Now screening, this can be expensive, it can be cheap, it can take a lot of time, it can be quick. Now what I mean by that is if you do something like switchgrass, switchgrass comparatively is cheap and is easy to just throw down and let it grow. Now, yeah, you have to babysit it for a couple of years to get it going. There's some spraying involved. There's some mowing involved. You need to really suppress any weeds that are competing with it because when it's young, it's really hard for it to get established if it has competition. So there is a lot more work involved than maybe the other things on the list. But for the most part, as far as screening is concerned, something like a switchgrass screen is extremely easy and cheap to put in as compared to saying doing something like conifers. Now, conifers can also be a huge attraction to your deer and not, I don't mean the conifers themselves, but the fact that they're screening and making the deer feel like they're protected, that is a huge attraction to the deer. So what you can actually do is mix like all of them together. So you have switchgrass, cheap and it grows very quickly as compared to conifers but then you might have something like pines like white pines that will sprout up super quick but if you leave them grow for too many years the tree just continues to grow and it just sprouts up and you lose all of that low cover which is of course what you want for your deer herd but then what you can do is mix spruce trees in there as well and those spruce will take a lot longer to grow than those uh, white pines will but as those spruce are getting established, those pines are coming up a lot faster. And by about the time that the pines are no longer providing you that solid screening down at a deer's level, those spruce will be doing that for you. And again, you can always have that switchgrass in there to get you started as well. So if you actually mix the three together, and I don't mean literally together, I mean like lines of each of them. But if you use the three of them, you will have a difficult screen to see through for years and years to come and i'm i mean like till your kids generation like when you start planting trees and stuff you're definitely thinking about the long haul here it takes years to get trees established now white pines yeah they grow quick but we're talking about something for ourselves 5 10 15 years down the road or for our children that much down the road or you know the future generation of our deer camp so I hope this helps. These are some things that you can really get working on right now. A lot of these things don't 
have a season of the year that you have to do them in. I mean, yeah, you need the ground to be thawed if you're going to put in a water hole, but all of these other things you can really get working on any time of the year, and they will all be a huge attraction to your deer herd, even though they're all real easy to put in and don't cost a whole lot of money. Now, if you guys felt like you got some value from this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so this channel can continue to grow to more people in this community, and they can be helped by the information that I'm providing here as well. I'll catch you guys on the next one.